Hey guys, I'm Cesar Milan, and today we're gonna see a dog named Target that I did a few years ago, and the title is, Has Caesar Met His Match? I think I did, I think I did, I, I, I think I did. I think Caesar might have met his match in Target. Do not attempt the training techniques you are about to see don't, without don't, consulting don't a professional. It. Tonight on Caesar 911, a grandmother terrorized in her home. Whoa! He's growling, he's snapping at anything and everything. By her grandson's little dog. Right from the beginning, once a dog attacks, attacks members of the family, humans who are members of the family, in my mind, right away I go to, is it trust or is it respect? as the dog has become super territorial, super dominant, meaning he's leading the whole thing. Or the dog has trust issues, meaning he's afraid of people, he's unsure, he's unclear, he's unhappy. People create chaos, so that also, fear can also make the dog bite, such as just territorial behavior, feeling that he is the one who set the rules by the limitations. So if you break the rules by the limitations, he has the right to follow through with his mouth. Right, so it's two ways. It's the fight or it's the flight. Just don't know how much more I can take. Can this dog be trained to stop biting? He bit me this morning. Ow! Ow. That hurt you a little. This is Caesar 911. One, one. Caesar's first 911 call comes from Kathy. He's frantic because she's under attack from her grandson's beloved Chihuahua mix, Target. Frantic. The word frantic is a good indication of the energy in the house, right? So if you see a person like this, tense, and the eyes comes out like this, and when they talk to you about the dog, and they move the shoulders super stiff and the neck is super stiff, that person is super tense. So that tension comes from the mind being frantic. You know, it's like, what am I gonna do? I'm, I feel alone, nobody's helping, and the dog is attacking me. So it turns like into a nightmare, right? So imagine that, because that's the energy that I remember right now when I'm watching this. It's like, wow, it feels like I'm in a nightmare with this, in this environment. How are you? I'm so happy to meet you. Thank you, oh, thank you. So sweet. <laughs> Ooh, are emotions going, going up? up? Yes, there are. Yeah. It's been kind of a nightmare. Yeah. Started when my grandson came oh, to okay. live with us. All right. And he's got a terrier chihuahua mix that could be called the Tasmanian Devil. When Target gets set off, it's like someone has hit a switch. He's growling, he's salivating and spitting and snapping at anything and everything. He bit me this morning. Imagine the same state of mind with a larger breed, you choose it. Um, people would uh, be terrified by now or people are actually become very ill or they lose a lot of weight. I've seen this many, many times where a dog with this energy creates such an unhealthy environment, but we all know it's not the dog. We all know it's not the dog, it's impossible. They, th this dog feels trapped, captured in this energy. Ow, that hurt you little so-and-so. As little as he is and as tiny as his teeth are, he hurts. Yeah. It's a nightmare from- Listen, I'm not afraid of the bite uh, with the teeth. What I, right away I get rid of is the energy that that dog is biting with. That is, it's like a back hug or, a, or a somebody who's giving you like really bad energy, like verbally, you know, somebody who wishes you bad. That's really bad. Or going into an environment that you get, you know, goosebumps because the energy is weird in that place. So uh, the worst part is not the bite. The worst part is the energy that they inflict through the bite. Because this bite is, is so against the pack code. It's so against loyalty. You know what I mean? It's so against trust. And so there's, there's a lot of confusion. So you remember when I say uh, um, confusion and happiness and chaos. So this is what happens. The dog is confused, he's unhappy, he's creating chaos. Perfect example. 
is, is frantic. It becomes super chaotic. The moment I wake up in the morning until I finally get to bed at night, no, no. it is always an issue whether Target's going to attack. I adore my grandson. I'd do anything for him. But I just don't know how much more I can take. So his level of aggression is high and your level of frustration is high, right? Yes. Yeah. And the dog has to stay in the kennel because I, I am terrified he's going to attack. It's not fair to the animal. It's not fair to us. It's gut-wrenching. I want his aggression. She was able to move um, Target with a pillow. There's no way in the world you can move a Rottweiler with a pillow. So that just shows you, you know, that just with the right approach, with the right energy, target can begin to not move forward. So I'm looking at this. Okay, so you need a pillow to ask target to move away, not to change his mind, because as soon as he goes into the crate, it gets even worse because you're trapping him, right? Handle. Usually I have to see the dog with the owner to figure out the problem. But because Target just moved into Miss Cathy's house, she's I love spending that more time with yeah. him. So I need to see how they both interact with each other. Yeah. All right, so, so this is what we're going to do. You're going to go inside, and I'm going to watch what you do. I want to understand where his aggression comes from. You yeah? got it. As Cathy goes inside her home, so, Caesar will watch. So finally, I'm saying, you know, I, um, I wanted to know where the aggression comes from. Now that we have an aggressive dog, is what makes the aggression? Is it the environment? Is it the people? Is it the activities? What is it? Because it's never, aggression is not the problem, it's the outcome of a problem. I'm gonna repeat that a million times because there is no knowledge behind instincts, it's all reaction. So here we have aggression. Where does the aggression come from? Environment, people, activities. Watch a live feed of her interaction with Target. Oh, she's, she's, see the dog is right there. She's the doing it. I love her. Unsure, and then but she's excited. Just... Unsure again. He's excited. Wow. Yeah. So okay, now here you can clearly see that Target is unsure with her. You can clearly see he wants the affection, but you see the uncertainty. So that confusion is super obvious. This is the best moment right here in this whole video. This is like the source of everything. Uncertainty, unsure, confused. This is it, so aggression. So this kind of aggression comes from lack of trust. Here's where I can feel it, I can see it, and hopefully you can see it. Uh, once she's reaching out with the hand and, and Target wants to get near her, but she is nervous. She doesn't trust him. So obviously Target feels this but you can clearly see this is, so this is not aggression as much as there's no trust, you know, as much as there's uncertainty. And you know, that's, that's really what's triggering the, the aggression. Oh, she's heading a dog that got tense. So this is about to get really bad. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. Mm -hmm. so Look, she, Target is coming closer to her, but she's moving away from him. You see, so instead of getting this close, intimate, a beautiful uh, a relationship, intimacy of relaxation, confidence, love, and joy. Even if you're not saying anything like verbally, you can still feel comfort, calm, confident, love, and joy. You can feel it. But as you can see, she's going away and more away and more away from target, right? So that alone is telling you, is telling us because we're decoding, we're breaking it down, we're showing the science behind why this is not working, why they're not moving forward, why this beautiful grandma who said, I love my grandson, I'll do anything for it. Where did this uh, feeling of non-love goes away? And you can see this trust. She loves them, but not trust them. Don't you, don't touch you. Oh, 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 okay. Get in there, get in. Hold on, hold on, I'll get it. All right, so this is just frantic, he's frantic. Yeah. That looks more like anger to me. Yeah. He's being confronted by something. Sorry. Nobody's getting hurt. Here. I think Caesar might have met his match in Target. He's frantic, so when you see a dog pulling back, ah, 
so I have to keep him there until he relaxes. Watch, he's gonna relax. Yes! Yep. That's right. That's amazing. Right. Yeah. So my energy is stronger than his. Yeah. He can buy an energy that... Yeah, my energy is stronger than his, meaning my, my calm, confident energy is stronger than his frantic, non-trusting, confused energy. That's, that's what I'm really saying. And because I have the lesion, I'm using the lesion in a way where I'm making the brain, instead of moving forward, move back. I'm, I'm controlling all the reaction. Remember, there is no knowledge behind instincts, it's all reaction. So I'm gonna create the right reaction so I can help him get to the calm surrender state. Right, so, you, so what I do in my job is I move a dog away from the fight, flight, avoidance, right? So fight is aggression, flight is fear, and avoidance is the dog not listening to me. So, so what I do is I make sure that I tell him how to feel, how, how to react. So that way he sees, okay, my old habit is not controlling me. It's now this human in front of me who knows how to use tools and energy and understand my energy and my psychology and is creating something that I'm missing, which is trust stronger than him he will absolutely buy an energy that's weaker than him that's right the whole fight the whole attack was definitely created by miscati you know he's stiff his yes. ears go back and he's already said I'm, I'm comfortable if you touch me i'm gonna bite it's obvious that miscati is part of the problem so i'm gonna have to work with her what's up nick hi how are you doing what's going on? but first i have to meet her grandson nick. nick because he is target's owner you almost look like me with the yeah. hair <laughs> Target is my first dog. He is a Chihuahua Terrier, and I've had him since I was about four years old. Woo. So more than half my life, we're buddies. You know, yeah. he's been there through thick and thin. My grandson Nick came to live with me. Thick and thin. This little kid is already talking about thick and thin, which is good. I really, you know, I'm I'm one of those kids that they they grew up in in harsh places and. And uh, I went through through a lot. Obviously, you know, I stayed with my parents, and and I had a uh, in a way normal. But I went through super harsh moments of my life. So I'm glad that he's going through harsh things. That makes that makes you character. And my husband six months ago because his parents were going through very hard times. They have separated, mm -hmm. and Nick has lost a lot of his possessions along the way. Mm -hmm. He came to live with us because he knew that he would be able to keep his zoo. Mm. As long as I can remember, yeah, he's an animal guy. It's joy seeing them. It's joy taking care of them. That's right. This is joy all around. He's never met an animal he didn't like, and he's great with them. He's patient. He knows how to train them. He knows how to make them behave. Except for Target. <laughs> Since I lived here, Target has got tremendously. Listen, obviously, she's talking about animals who live in a container. And, you know, so it's definitely, which is it's a responsibility. You can see that he's responsible, but then he doesn't have the mentor that is needed for other kinds of animals, right? So animals, they actually have to get out a lot more, more often. And so, but he shows First. great responsibility. Growling is Target's warning. If you stay after Target growls at you, he will bite you. Target. And Target is very aggressive towards my grandma. You can see she, she's physically stressed. It's hard to see my dog doing that to someone that I care about. At this point, it's almost like deciding between Target and my grandmother. Hey. For the past few years, I've had a lot of changes, but the only thing that would stay the same would be Target. He's the only thing I have since my childhood. So I'm really holding on to him. The animals are the last things that he has. Mm -hmm. They are his stability. That's right. They're what he cares about and he takes care of. And Target was his first. He adores him. But telling Nick that Target has to go is a real possibility. We need Caesar's help right now because my grandma's at the point where she is going to get rid of Target. Send him to the pound and that would be it for Target. So to have Caesar come would be saving my dog's life. This is as bad as it gets when it comes to fear. This is a terrified dog, but you can't label this guy as aggressive unless you become tense because that triggers that reaction in him. Mm -hmm. The good thing is he's given so much warnings. The bad thing is nobody's reading the warnings. 
All I've tried to do is give him love and affection. Mm. At the wrong time, that's the worst way. Mm -hmm. That's the part that you don't understand. That you give At the wrong time, oh my God. No, this week has been very enlightening to me because I have been talking a lot about different cases that have been happening throughout this week. Um, and people ask me, so what, how do I, Caesar, how does the dogs become aggressive? Well, I, I, we can all agree. If they don't get enough exercise, that's going to frustrate them. If they don't get enough mental stimulation, they're going to, they're going to feel bored. You, you can do aggressive behavior that way. Or if you can give affection at the wrong time. So if you don't do exercise, if you don't do mental stimulation or give affection at the wrong time, you can actually make a dog aggressive. You're giving love and affection at the wrong time. You mean well. He doesn't understand you. It hurts to think that here I am trying to save this dog and I'm the problem. Here I see what triggers Target's fear. As his need for space with someone gets in his face. I need oh to my show God, this look to look my so can clearly dog see bark. the Oh my God! Caesar look invites right. Kathy and Nick to join my dog him. Dog at the DPC. Look, no oh my God! So oh my sure God! Hey guys, I am Caesar Milan, and I hope you enjoy decoding, breaking it down, and the science of Caesar's with me. It's all about energy. It's all about the psychology, and then is the training. So remember, the order is energy, psychology, and training. Energy, psychology, training. Three, four, or five. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.